go to amplifiers and we have seen that we model them as two port for the functional behavior and let's add noise sources to the amplifier because we know up front before we are going to design the amplifier that it will add noise so how can we model that and more interesting what is a useful model for us what is a model that helps us with designing and i will show you that there are six ways of modeling it and here you see six ways because basically um, we have two independent variables and two dependent variables so we can the network is completely defined if you have two uh, noise sources added and you can do two at the input a two at the output b uh, one at the input one at the output can be voltage type one at the input one at the output can be current type then you have c and d and the other uh, the hybrid notations voltage input current out and current input voltage out that are six ways of representing the noise behavior of two ports and for us the first one is a very nice one because you can imagine our SBR, if we are going to design the amplifier, we know nothing about the amplifier because we have to design it. But we know something about its specifications. We know that we should make, for example, a certain noise figure, that the total noise should not, de uh, the, the signal to noise ratio should not deteriorate too much. And we have a signal source. Usually you start a an amplifier design with the specification of a source and a load and the specification of what you want and the quality. So that is also how much noise is there allowed to be added. And in this case, we know nothing of the amplifier yet and we can say, okay, if I use model A, I only need, and that we will show that later, I only need the source to find useful values for this Ampli the noise sources that the amplifier uh, can add or can ha can have the equivalent input noise sources of the amplifier those represent all the noise they're not physically there it's just a model and remember our models are wrong but some are useful so model a is very useful for us and we will see later that we can completely ignore the amplifier and say well if we know something about if we can specify V and I noise at the input of the amplifier, then we know everything about the deterioration of the signal to noise ratio that will happen. So that is important. So <coughs> we have this noise presentation, as I told you already, and of course they can be translated in one to another. And this, uh, um, this is done in one example or two examples in the book, so I invite you to study that. But it is not our fun to do, to let's say, for an exam, uh, we have situation C, and now we want you to calculate the, the equivalent noise source of sit situation D. This can easily be done by computers. We want you to understand what it means. So those noise sources only represent the noise of the amplifier and they are not physically there the noise sources are everywhere in the amplifier and we can say well they are noticeable at the output and we can make them equivalent input and that is just what we are doing here so just making a model can we measure them also is it you can we also say well we have we have measurement equipment we could we could de uh, determine those noise sources well let's let's do something here I have a picture, a spectrum analyzer, a two port modeled with A, B, C, D, the, the transmission one matrix parameters that we discussed last time. And um, I model the amplifier as a noisy amplifier uh, with two equivalent input noise sources, Vn and Im. And if I short the input, you see that the In flows completely through the short. So In cannot contribute to the noise that is observed at the output of the amplifier which means that together with a b c d and vn i can measure the spectrum of vn so by shorting it we can measure the equivalent input noise voltage now if we leave it open then the noise voltage cannot contribute to the output 
noise that you observe in the spectrum analyzer because it's simply not connected. It is, uh, there cannot flow any current. And the, cur the current of IN now flows completely into the amplifier, which means that this somehow is amplified, characterized by A, B, C, D, as we have seen in the last presentation. And we can observe uh, the spectrum of IN. So this is the spectrum of VM measured. Measured is uh, related to IN. And for this, of course, we need the parameters A, B, C, D, and we need to know something maybe about the impedance, input impedance of the spectrum analyzer, if necessary. And, um, and then we can determine those sources. And that's why you can find them in data sheets. They can really be measured. And of course, these are all only representations. The noise sources are not physically there. They are everywhere in the amplifier. This is just a model, but a useful one.